Okay, so last night I was uh, I was lying in bed, and uh, my roommate's cat came into my room, and he hopped up onto my bed, and he climbed with his little paws onto my chest, and he started meowing, and I just lay there, giving him pets, you know, smooshing his face and going, right? And uh, I had the thought, I had the thought that uh, this scenario has played out before. Um, you know, maybe in, uh, in like medieval Poland, some guy was, uh, was lying in bed, some guy in his early 20s lying in bed with his cat, just going, ju -ju 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 -ju, or whatever the Polish version of that is. Uh, but then I had another thought, and I was like, oh, no, this of course has happened in ancient Egypt. And that is because the ancient Egyptians were just complete cat people, totally cat people. Um, and so I'm going to take this video just to uh, kind of explain how and why the ancient Egyptians were cat people. So lots of people already know that uh, the ancient Egyptians worshipped cats and had cat-headed goddesses, but that's all they really know about it. Um, to go over some a little bit of backstory to tell you how everything happened uh, in a very uh, quick way. Domestic cats evolved from the African wildcat during the early Neolithic period, probably in either Egypt or the Fertile Crescent, or both simultaneously. Well, maybe not simultaneously, but around the same time, early Neolithic. Uh, and the reason why cats were domesticated by people is because cats are a very useful companion. Um, because A, they are adorable and absolute snuggle bunnies. Um, but more importantly for people, uh, they have a practical use and that is keeping pests under control. You know, if you're, if you're just starting to put grain into big places, you really don't want mice coming and eating the grain and infecting it with their poop and stuff like that and their pee and just eating it in general. You know, that's how diseases are transmitted. So cats play the very important role of killing off mice and stuff like that. And they do it a lot. You know, they'll just do it for fun. That's why cats are so great. Um, but they really, cats really took off in ancient Egypt um, because the pests that they controlled there were often venomous snakes and scorpions, which, um, contrary to mice, don't eat grain. Uh, in fact, they um, have the nasty tendency of biting people or stinging people and killing them. So cats are great at killing these, uh, these dangerous animals. Uh, and this probably has to do why cats became so religiously significant and why they were eventually deified. They were strongly associated with protection and religious iconog iconography and, and spells and were often placed in contrast to snakes and scorpions and um, other evil spirits. Um, cats, cat deities were actually generally goddesses, which I find interesting. You know, the ancient Egyptians viewed cats as more female. Um, that's cool. And these goddesses usually had super badass names, super rad names, like uh, Maftet and Bastet and Sekhmet, uh, although Sekhmet had a Lion's Head and Bastet eventually merges with Sekhmet, but still, they the Egyptians had thousands of gods and goddesses, you know, so cat-headed goddesses are a thing for most of ancient Egypt. Um, and all this shows us that uh, cats were pretty popular up in, uh, and sorry, what I meant to say is this is all popular as early as the first dynasty in Egypt which goes to show that the whole cat thing goes pretty far back, uh, like all the way back to the Neolithic, right? If the, if the religious groundwork is already there in the first dynasty, you know, which is about 2900 or 2900 uh, BCE. So this probably goes back another 2000 years, just cats being, or just Egyptians being cat people. But what's so cool about cats in ancient Egypt um, is that they just were the preferred pet of choice for all of it. You know, through all of ancient Egypt from the first dynasty to the imperial Roman period, the Egyptians were cat people. 
you know? Even as their religion changed, cats remained an important part of their religion, which is so cool because the Egyptian religion changes a lot from the first dynasty all the way to the, uh, the Hellenistic period and the Christian period. Um, you know, cats are so important that they were the most commonly found mummy after humans. And, uh, and it's believed that cats represented an important sector of the Egyptian economy. Right? This, this is mostly revolving around the mummification process of cats because the mummification, that whole thing was a large part of the Egyptian economy, um, mostly around you know, their cultural economy. Um, but this is, uh, this, this is a thing. You know, they were an important economic part of ancient Egypt. Um, so then why, why would they be, you know, so commonly mummified? And the reason is that, well, there's two reasons. First, they were often used for animal sacrifices and votives for pilgrims on their way to, uh, to different uh, pilgrimage sites and temples, uh, which, isn't as, which isn't as cool, I think. Uh, but a lot of the times you just had these cat mummies, which were pets that had died and had been given the honor of mummification presumably to reunite with their owners in the afterlife, which I think is, is really sweet, you know, because the ancient Egyptians believed that you had to be mummified in order to uh, get to the afterlife and, um, and live in the afterlife. So, you know, they're giving this, this honor to their pets, you know, so, they're, so that they can be uh, reunited with them in the afterlife. Um, Egyptians were also quite superstitious when it came to cat. When it came to cats, um, they had uh, they held killing cats to be a serious crime, and uh, the veneration of cats, you know, the kind of worshipish, worshiping, uh, worshipish of cats, only declined when Egypt Egypt became officially Christian during the late Roman Empire. And I say officially Christian, um, and I say declined, because even after uh, Egypt became officially Christian, the, uh, the kind of veneration of cats did not die out immediately. It declined. Um, but by, you know, the fifth century, it's pretty much, uh, they just really like cats, you know? Um, and there's the, you know, there's, there's a really, a really, uh, interesting, I wouldn't call it cool. There's an interesting anecdote, uh, about when the Persians invaded Egypt, the Persians end up winning a major battle, and the uh, myth is that either they um, nailed cats to their shields, which is pretty gruesome, or they just put cats on their front lines. Uh, but either way, this stopped the Egyptians from attacking. Uh, this probably isn't true, but it does show uh, the stereotype that Egyptians worshipped and just really liked cats. Uh, and that this is a stereotype in the Mediterranean. Um, at the time of the guy who wrote it, I think the guy wrote it either in the 2nd century AD or BC. I can't remember which. I think it was, I think it's 2nd century BC. Uh, but anyway, that's really just it. Uh, the ancient Egypt, Egyptians, quite like myself, were cat people. Um, not just because they really liked cats, but because cats were useful and because they were, uh, religious. They had religious connotations, uh, which I think is cool. You know, I think it's, I think the Egyptians being cat people is just an interesting little part of his history, a little tidbit of, uh, social and cultural ancient history.